It's not very often that I find myself yelling excitedly while I'm working totally alone, but that's been happening a lot lately as I've really been diving into generate press and generate blocks. I'm sure it's true for you as well that whenever you find something new that takes your workflow to the next level, there pretty much is no professional feeling quite like it. For me, the feature that's almost hidden in plain sight inside of Generate Press is called Hooks. With this, you've probably heard the name Hooks before and it works kind of in the same way. What the hooks allow you to do is insert any element pretty much anywhere across your site without any custom code. So you can think about it as though you are hooking an element into a portion of your site by way of this feature inside of Generate Press, also called hooks. The power here is really, really immense. What you can do is put any element pretty much anywhere. It can go before or after your header. It can go inside the header content before or after your footer, sidebars, pretty much anywhere. You get the idea. Generate Press has a really great guide to all of the different hook locations, but what I'm going to do in this video is show you just a few of them that I've used lately on client sites. And I'm confident that this will be enough for you to grasp how powerful this feature can really be and kind of you know get your brain working for your use case. So let me go ahead and show you what I mean. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you that I do have a Generate course coming soon. So if you're somebody that's looking to build fast, accessible, and powerful websites, then this course is definitely for you. So you can find more information at the link in the description below. So here I am in Figma, and what I have is a few example layouts for us to demonstrate kind of the effect here. So in a typical Generate Press header, you're gonna have your menu links along with a search icon, but by default, you don't have a way to add a button directly into the header element. So all you need to do is take advantage of the hooks feature, and we're gonna tie it into a hook called after header content. So these hook names are really self-explanatory. I mean, you can pretty much look at it and know what it is. Sometimes there's a few that are really close in terms of names, so you have to play with it a little bit. But what we're going to do is add a button to our header on this demo WordPress site. So if we take a look here, you can see I pretty much created that exact same header, except I don't have the button. So this is going to be pretty easy to add. What we're going to do is in the back end, we're going to go to the elements feature. And if this doesn't show up, all you have to do is go to generate press here and enable elements. So what I'm going to do is under elements, I will add a new one and we're just simply going to choose the element type of block. We're going to give this a name and we'll just call this one header button. And then down here in the editor, I'm just going to add a single button element. I'll go ahead and give it my global style, which is set inside of generate blocks. So there's my button and I can just say, you know, call now. Whatever my text is going to be, of course, this button is totally fluid, so you can have it do whatever you need it to. And then on the element, what we're going to do is make sure the type is set to hook, and then you can search for the hook name, or of course, you can just scroll through the list. So of course, we're gonna be working with our header, and the hook that we're looking for is after header content. So all we have to do is set that hook name. Now we do need to give this a location rule. So the most obvious one is probably going to be setting this location to your entire site. But let's say for some reason, you only wanted this to be on your homepage or something particular like posts or pages, all we have to do is simply just choose where we want this to show up. So I'm going to choose entire site. I'm going to publish this element, and then we can just simply refresh this on the front end and bam, look at that. Our button is now active in the header, just like that. It's so simple and so cool. So that one's fairly straightforward, but I bet your mind is already racing with the possibilities here. So the next one we're gonna take a look at is this before header hook. So we can add something almost like an announcement bar above our header with the hook called before header. So again, what I'm going to do is add a new element. This is nice because you can see them from the back end here and know where they apply. So we're gonna do another block and we will just call this one um, announcement bar and I'll spell announcement properly, there we go. What we'll do inside of this is just stick in a container and then for our background, we're gonna set a color here. Let's just choose something kind of dark. I'll make the text white just like that. And then I'll stick in a headline block. Let's make this maybe like an H3 and we'll say, you know, new products. You can put whatever you want inside of this. So of course, if you wanted this to be a button element too, this is not going to look very good because of our global style, but you get the idea. You can add whatever you want inside of this bar. I'm just simply going to leave this as a headline block for now. And on my container, I'm just gonna add some spacing. Let's just go with uh, maybe like 0.5 EM top and bottom. And then I will simply just center this headline. Now, again, we're gonna go to the element type over here. And for the hook, we're going to go before header. Then again, our location, this could be entire site or front page. The use case for me in this particular example was the client wanted an announcement bar just on the home page, And so of course I could do that with the location rule of just front page. So we'll go with entire site here just for the sake of example, publish this, 
refresh. And right there underneath my admin bar, if I hide that a little bit of spacing problem, but you get the idea. We now have that element added above our header with no code required at all. So another really cool one that I needed to do was add this email sign up box before the footer, but only on certain pages. So this is where the display rules really come into their own because in this case, I only wanted it to be in certain places. Some posts needed it, some posts didn't. I did not wanna show it on certain WooCommerce pages. And so this one is fairly straightforward to do as well. Again, we're gonna go back to our element section and we'll just simply add a new element. Once more, we'll create a block. We'll just call this email sign up. We would build out the content here. So I'll just add in a container. We had a couple of headlines. So we'll say, you know, sign up. Then there was another headline that was uh, lesser exclusive offers and promos. And then there was another headline that was just a paragraph, I believe. I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch of time styling this out. Oh, actually I was wrong. There was not multiple here. There was just a paragraph and it said this. Now, for the sake of this example, I want you to ignore the fact that this is an image and not a real sign up form, but uh, we don't need to go through the process of styling or gravity form and all that kind of stuff. So in this container, I am just simply going to change the background color to give it a slightly different offset. Now, as a general rule in Generate Press, I'm gonna define all of my global colors here. So I'm not actually gonna use the hex color. I would use one of my global colors for this tutorial site. Of course, I don't have that. So the other thing we're gonna do is add some padding. I believe there was something like two EM top and bottom. And then we just need to go ahead and center all of this. Okay, so then the hook name over here, if we just scroll down to the footer, look at how many there are in here. There's content, so many in the content section. And then for our footer, we're gonna go with before footer. Now, if you have multiple elements that apply to the same hook, you also have this priority option here to figure out which one should come first. And then in terms of location options, like I already mentioned, what I did in the other site was I said entire site and then I excluded the pages that I didn't want. So let's say maybe for whatever reason you don't want it on your archives, you can exclude from all archives. You can exclude it from a particular post or page. So if I wanted to remove it from a particular page, maybe like WooCommerce checkout, I could do page and then just choose the page that I do not want it on. And now what I can do is just simply publish this element. Hopefully it doesn't look terrible on the front end, but if we come down here and refresh, then there you go. There is the element that we just created stuck there right before our footer. So you can see there is a ton of power here. There's a lot of other hooks that I'm not taking advantage of like things for before and after sidebars and other places across your site that the hooks might really help you. Like I mentioned before, Generate Press has a great guide to understand where the hook locations kind of tie into. So I'll link that in the description below. Also, like I said, if you wanna sign up for the Generate course, please do hit that link in the description below to be taken to my website. If you're not interested in the course, no problem at all. I would love to have you here on the channel though. So if you hit that subscribe button, that is extremely helpful and I greatly appreciate it. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a future video.